Welcome to this podcast and um, apologize about the uh, quality of the podcast. I'm uh, on the road here, so uh, not in my uh, back home in my studio, but just thought I'd talk about the Tesla bot. And a few days ago, Elon Musk on a podcast reaffirmed basically that the Tesla bot is no joke. This whole thing is real and there, this thing's not a joke. Uh, in fact, he made a quite stunning announcement uh, that this is in fact their number one priority. Now, Elon Musk has said a lot of things. Um, he's very obviously very kind of a polarizing figure, but hey, you can't question the results. What, two million electrical vehicles when nobody said he could do it and uh, shows no signs of, of sort of slowing down. So talking about this Tesla bot, um, a couple things I wanted to talk about in this podcast. Um, first is what it means for humanity. Now, Tesla, uh, I'm sorry, Elon Musk said something very interesting. He said, what if we eliminated the economy? Now, that's a very provocative, sort of profound statement, but I can envision a day. Now, when that comes, who knows? It undoubtedly will happen where you basically can decide whether you want to work or not. Bots will be doing uh, pretty much could be doing all your everyday chores. It might even they might even take away all your everyday chores, your home maintenance, uh, everything you do. You might just literally live in the lap of luxury. Now, there might be and well, there will be some people that will undoubtedly reject that. Uh, but what Elon Musk was saying, you might have an option. Do you really want to? Is that something you want to do? And so that's really uh, sort of the uh, the game changing idea of this this bot. And people, uh, you know, they didn't take you know they didn't take Elon Musk seriously when he said he was going to produce electric cars. Remember, there were a lot of people saying, "No, it can't be done. You're not going to be able to do that. Won't happen." Well, look at where, where we are today. You know, he has one of the largest companies not just in America, in the world. So, you know, I, I think it's dangerous to assume Elon Musk uh, can't do something. He's the type of guy that, you know, he tells you to get it done, he means get it done or you're fired. That kind of thing. You either get this stuff done or, you know, or make it happen, make it happen. And he's recruiting all of the top AI guys. And obviously he's gonna use a lot of parts uh, that he's already got in his car. Uh, including the Dojo supercomputer. Um, he's going to put that to good use. Obviously, a lot of the sensors, a lot of the AI software. Um, so I think he is going to make this happen. I don't think there's any doubt. And he realizes that there's a huge market for this, huge market, market both commercial and residential. So one of the questions is how long? And that that's sort of the thing I was thinking. Now, they're talking about having a prototype uh, by the end of 2022. And that will be very interesting to see the unveiling of that, to see what it can do. Now, I'm guessing, I guess the next question is, how long till we actually see this in our home where it's doing things useful? Now, apparently it can carry, I think the initial design is it'll be five foot eight, I'm pulling this off my top of my head, and uh, 180 pounds and will carry 45 pounds. I thought that's that's what the original specs are. What's really exciting about this, though, is that, you know, he's going to treat this kind of like his his cars. Right. I mean, they'll be able to get firmware updates. The bot will improve. It'll be tied to a neural net network. Um, all of this is very, very exciting. And of course, Tesla is leading the way in artificial intelligence. So. I do think he will pull this off. But again, uh, I'm sorry, I'll circle back to where where uh, where we actually see this in the, you know, in, as a home application. Now, that is really a difficult one. Um, I can now I you know, probably this thing will start out in um, in, you know, in factories like Elon Musk said. So let's say they get a working pr prototype in 2022. You have to assume it's probably going to be one to two years before he actually gets that in the factory. So we're talking 2024. Now, to get this into the home where it's actually doing useful things. Now, they may get it into the home, but where this actually can, you know, I want a Coca-Cola. 
please go get it for me. Or I, or I want you to do um, the dishes, something like that, or do the laundry. To me, that's seven to 10 years away. If I had to guess, probably uh, seven to 10 years, that would be my guess. Now, it's going to get really weird. I mean, I think in 10 years, things are going to get really strange. Um, I mean, we're going to have bots. Um, you know, you obviously have the uh, gene editing tools. I'll do a, a podcast on that as well. I mean, things are starting, and obviously virtual reality. Those are, what I kind of like to call the big three. CRISPR, uh, the gene editing, bots, and uh, virtual reality with augmented reality. So those are kind of the big three things, I think, that are going to really start to change things over the next 10 to 20 years. Now, if you go 20 to 30 years out, uh, these could be full AI companions. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of lonely people in the world. I mean, let's face it. It's a, a big cause of suicides and a lot of things. So uh, they'll provide companionship and they probably will work on, I mean, more advanced tasks like uh, home maintenance. Like I need part of my roof fix. Go fix it. That's probably 20 to 30 years out. But you have to think by 2050, uh, a lot of this this world's going to be very different. Now, going maybe even further out, I mean, now this is probably you know 40 years away. I'm thinking it might be sooner. I don't know. I mean, the advances are happening happening now so fast. These timelines could be way off. But what Elon Musk talked about was he envisions a day where there, there'll be more Tesla bots out there than actual cars he's putting on the road. There'll be more of those than cars. How interesting is that? And, you know, you think about it. What is, what is uh, w w when he made that very provocative statement that what is work? Will we even be working? Um, and that's, that's pretty interesting when you think about it. The real, I mean, obviously, well, it would totally change the way the whole world operates, right? But it would be an even bigger benefit to a place like Africa. Think about Africa, where food is so scarce all the time. But what if you had bots doing all the farming, doing a lot of those chores? I mean, it could be revolutionize some of these areas that have suffered, you know, areas of Africa that have suffered for, for so long. So that could be, uh, you know, a huge, huge um, benefit. But then it begs the question, do we even need... Now, I, I know this is going to, I don't, I don't think we'll ever, well, at least in the short term, get rid of the idea of countries. We won't be in this Star Trek universe where uh, the world actually uh, works together. But I think it could nudge it that way. Like, for instance, if everybody has everything they need, if everybody has goods available to them at little to no cost, do we really need wars anymore? Do we really need countries anymore? Now, obviously, I don't think they're going away anytime soon, but I think it could lessen uh, the need for wars, the need for, you know, that type of thing. Now, there might obviously resources and stuff. There'll be there'll be competition for those. But, you know, will you even need a universal basic income if you can have a bot literally do everything? What if a bot could build everything in your house? Right. You, it could recycle everything. And that's another point I wanted to make. I, I, and this is the key to this. You have to have some sustainability if you really want to get to this. This, um, And I think Elon Musk has talked about this. Sustainability is very important. So if you really wanted to get independent of everything, you wanted to have a completely uh, self-sufficient house, you would have to have uh, sustainability. What do, I mean, what do I mean by that? Well, you'd have to have... Uh, You'd have to be off the grid. You'd have to have, um, you know, solar would have to be able to power all your needs, you know, maybe even wind, all these things uh, that would have to come into play, too. And I, that's advancing, too. I mean, you're seeing these solar generators. I think they just I mean, it seems like every month there's some new innovation with solar generators. So I, I, I don't think that's going to be a huge issue. But, you know, you get all of these combined. I could see a day in 2060 where you have uh, your, your house is basically completely self-sufficient. The bots could do just about everything for you. They could even farm for you. They could even create a mini farm. And it would be a fully fledged expert botanist, right? And if it needed an update to do, you know, some new level of botany, it could just up, update itself like in the matrix. 
Now, I know one of the things that people are worried about is some sort of dystopian future. Um, I get arguments with my friend all the time about this. He's, he thinks this stuff, you know, needs to be stopped, but it's, it's beyond that point now. Let's face it. We, uh, we just have to, I mean, you almost have to think positively about it because this stuff's coming. It's not stopping. There's no stopping this now. This, this train, this ship left port long ago. There's no stopping it. So you have to just embrace it and just hope for the best. I don't think there's any way to stop it. Um, but I also think I like to think more positively, and I think this is going to usher in uh, some tremendous um, uh, technological advances like we've never seen. And, uh, okay, well, that's it for this podcast. If you liked it, I'll do another one. Thanks, thanks for listening.